we are going to take a look at how to scan film borders with the Epson V600 and Silverfast scanning software. So first on my scanner, I have the film negative sitting on the glass with the emulsion side up. The emulsion side is the duller side of the film and I have it facing up so that on these film borders that the uh, name of the film can be read. If you have the film flipped over with the emulsion side down, it will still scan, um, but the, the words, the writing on the film borders will be backwards. And so then on top of that, I have a piece of glass to hold my negative in place and to keep it flat. So here in Silverfast, I opened it up and then I did press pre-scan so that I can see what is on my scanner. But let's make sure our other settings are where they need to be. So over here in the scan dimensions panel, I'm going to make sure that I have chosen the folder where I want the images to go. And then I'm going to make sure that I've chosen the resolution of my images. And right now I'm scanning at 1600 PPI, but you can certainly make that larger if you're looking for larger scans or smaller. The larger the scans, the longer it does take to scan. And now let's go up here to these four sections. And I have it set to transparency because it is a transparent film negative. I have negative selected because that's what I'm scanning. And here I am scanning black and white, so I selected 8-bit black and white. And then before we go to frame, let's go ahead and select our film stock. So if we go down here to the Negafix panel, we can select the Ilford film stock, and that will just give us the tones and contrast of what Ilford HP5 typically looks like. So let's select Ilford. HP5 plus and leave it at 400. Now, right now the frame is, I have the whole negative selected and you'll see that my tones are kind of all over the place here. This film border does affect the tones in your image. So it's, it's setting your exposure and contrast automatically and it's including this black border. So let's select our frames and then work on editing it so that it does not do that. So up here, I'm going to go to frames and I'm going to go to fine frames. And these are six by six frames. So I'm going to select six by six. And it has selected these three images as frames. This one's cut off, so we're not going to scan that one right now. So, but right now I don't have the border selected, but you see how it fixed a lot of those exposure and contrast problems. The images look a lot better right now. And that's because it took all this black that was in the frame out of, of setting the exposure and contrast. So if I just pull these frames, you can just pull these frames back out to include them. Do you see how that image got super, super light? It's because it's including this black border as part of the image, but we can tell it not to do that. So I'm going to bring this back in for a second to just the frame. So and it doesn't matter. You can go inside the frame. It doesn't matter. So these are much closer to the color, the tones that I want for this black and white image. But now I'm going to go over here to this Negafix panel and unclick Auto. So I've taken Auto off, and that means that I can stretch out this frame and it won't automatically adjust anymore. So now I am scanning the film border as well. And so I'm going to do that for each of these frames. So before I stretch out this film border, I'm going to come over here and click auto. So now it will not adjust anymore. And so we're going to pull this out to include the borders. And let's say I want this image a lot lighter or more contrasty. I can come over here to exposure and pull that up if I want. So I can pull that exposure up or down anything I want, and it will adjust that just that one frame. So let's pull it up just a little bit, but we're going to, we're going to scan it right there. 
And then on the third frame, we're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to come over here, turn off auto. So it doesn't try to adjust it when I include that frame. And then I just pull out the frames, uh, pull out this red rectangle to include the frames here. And you can overlap. That's fine. Okay, so now I'm just ready to scan. You can make any other adjustments to individual frames if you'd like. You can come over here and play with contrast and tones or here in exposure. You can play with all these settings over here. I typically like to just get a solid scan and then adjust everything else in Photoshop later. Now, if you hold down this scan button, it gives you the option to scan just one frame at a time or you can batch scan them all at the same time. I'm going to click batch scan. And then we are going to just pick the folder where you want those to go and click scan. So now my scanner is going to work on that and you will have images that include the frame borders. The biggest thing to remember is if this border is throwing off your image, pull the frame in to just your image and then come over here and unclick this auto setting and then you'll be able to readjust your frame, include the border, and it won't mess up the interior of your image. And this works for color or black and white, anything that you'd like to scan.